Good morning. Everyone's taking a few more minutes to be able to come on in. Hello, hello. Morning. Let's can do that mic check again. I was not can quite sure me? if I... Yep. Testing, okay, that's much better. Testing. One, no, that was two, all. It was just like the... <laughs> I don't want to lose listen here. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know Saad isn't going to be joining us, but um, we also don't really require quorum for this particular meeting as it's going to be a discussion and um, I really hope no voting. Um, so I will be very surprised, Liz, if you come up with something to vote on then. I think so too. <laughs> um, just having a look to see if I can find the deck. I know you'll be sharing it anyway, but if you can post a link to it, that would be great. Thank you. Done. All right. Do you think we're ready to get started? Have we got enough? Yeah, we can rock and roll. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Hope everyone's feeling both energized and recovered after KubeCon. <laughs> All right. So I think the main topic for today is the DevSecOps end user radar, uh, which I think a few people, actually, it's Justin here. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Hey. Hello, Justin. Hope you're feeling right. better. Um, and uh, Ricardo and I, and I think a few others sort of had some opinions on this radar. So I think maybe if we go on to the next slide, it sort of illustrates what it is that we're talking about. Um, I think so the end user radar is currently something that's handled entirely outside of the TOC community by the end user community. And uh, I guess some of what I'm going to say is probably just my own opinion, but um, I think a lot of these have been really useful and, and give us some insight into what end users are really adopting in the real world. But when it came to this particular one, uh, certainly I had some concerns. I heard some concerns from other people. Um, and I think we need to have a conversation about how the TIC community, like what value we would like to get out of these end user radars, how we could potentially, I mean, we're a technical oversight committee, so perhaps we should be exercising some technical oversight and making sure that these radars actually make sense uh, as they get published, particularly, you know, they're getting published in the CNCF's name, we should, you know, ideally we would all be aligned and have confidence in these radars. Um, so I think I wanted to just make sure we had the opportunity to air concerns about these uh, and maybe try and think of some constructive ways that we could engage with the end user community to, uh, you know, to go forward and make sure that we're, we're producing good versions of these things. Um, so I think the next slide has some of the concerns that we thought of, and I would love to hear if other people disagree or if they feel that, um, you know, we're missing things, then, you know, this could certainly be a, a discussion, should be a discussion. I believe that the fundamental source of issues for this particular radar was the scope in the first place. Um, I think Dev DevSecOps is such a broad scope that it's not very clear which projects would or wouldn't be included in that. There's a lot of different 
solutions in that radar that have some kind of association with security in a very loose sense, but I don't think it really serves very well to compare GitOps solutions against key management solutions or CNI plugins against CICD platforms. And that's what this particular radar seem to be um, uh, pr presenting. I know that when they brought up the whole proposal of the end user ra radar, it was a deliberate decision not to include, not only to include CNCF projects. Uh, I think that's great because it means we may get exposure to some other projects that we're not really aware of. And, and it gives us some ideas about what maybe is missing from the CNCF landscape. But personally, I do not believe we should be promoting commercial products in these radars. And I think as a kind of corollary to that, we should be very consistent about whether we're including vendor names in those radars. So some of those projects, if, if we just skip back to the, the previous slide, Amy, yeah. So there's some things in there that are open source projects. There are some things in there that are commercial products. There are some things that additionally have a vendor name associated with them. I mean, yeah, HashiCorp, I, I'm a big fan of HashiCorp, but why do they get to have their name associated with Vault and Sentinel where JFrog doesn't get to say JFrog for X-Ray as an example? Um, so I feel like there, there needs to be a, a kind of sense check on these radars when they're published. So I think those were the concerns I had about that particular radar and um, ricardo oh, dims you've got your hand up please oh i can wait for ricardo to go first no so, you, you yeah sorry can you hear me yes i'll just do a disclaimer i have my son here with me so if you hear some shouts uh, you know what it is <laughs> but uh, <laughs> i was i was just gonna say um yeah, I agree with what Liz said. Uh, I, I would also say that one, one good thing I find in these user radars is that we get like a kind of a, a dump of what the end users are actually focusing on, which products they're actually uh, focusing. And coming back from KubeCon last week, one thing I noticed is that there, even if we have like a mix of different, different projects here, there is some value here to see, for example, a lot of people are using things like Argo and Flux and they would probably traditionally do something like SOPs to encrypt their secrets when they are doing GitOps. And it's all kind of mixing things together. And one thing that I saw is that a lot of people started using, for example, Argo with Vault, and they suddenly start doing like rotation of their passwords uh, just for free. Um, and and it's, it's a huge improvement. Instead of just encrypting in Git their one-time passwords and basically never changing them, now suddenly there's a solution that allows them to to do like constant rotation of the passwords without having to focus on this. And when I look at this, uh, like multiple projects, uh, like I, I agree with Liz, like Argo and, and, and all these other projects in the same like diagram, it's kind of confusing, but, but they do start mixing in, in the ways end users focus on them. Uh, one of the things that uh, came out in when the in the discussion video of this end user radio was this uh, that um, the focus on DevSecOps was actually at the expense of developer experience and maybe maybe these things are kind of helping I, I don't know it was just um, I agree it's a bit confusing but they do start giving some value by by connecting to each other do they give value through this diagram or is there value from combining i i don't think that this this diagram really tells us anything about using vault to store secrets for argo cd yeah exactly yeah. no it doesn't come out out of this but yeah. but they do like when combined and maybe maybe it's just not expressed properly having them like as single bullets maybe maybe we should say more like what is used with what you know, not just dumping names there Dims, you had your hand raised before. Yeah, um, I was trying to figure out if there is a GitHub repository where they assemble this and, you know, just like, you know, landscape, we have a GitHub repository where PRs are made. Um, so uh, I couldn't 
exactly figure out how this came about or how this specific uh, set of things came about and whether that process is uh, you know open where we can go in and chime um, so you can maybe answer that then so th yes. this is a, this is a form that is sent to the end users and okay. it's basically an excel sheet where uh, each end user puts a column for themselves and then they for each of the products there they say the level assess trial adopts for the ones they actually touched and they can add new lines if new cells if they they have other products to add got it then then the follow up question uh, Ricard, uh, would be uh, like how did these names came about uh, that ended up in the form, right? Like, so what, basically I'm looking for, like what was the transparent process where we, uh, we as CNC, uh, the TOC could insert ourselves uh, to provide some feedback at some point before it gets published. That was basically what I was looking for. Okay. I think that is at the heart of the problem. I don't think there is such a, yeah, I such a point right now. Yeah, that's, that's Justin, I think you were next. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it, I think the the process of people just adding things that they lump into this area is just a little bit weird. I mean, I think that like if people if this was stories about how people had learned to do you know DevSecOps better by using these tools, I would it would be really exciting. Like if 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 GitHub Actions has helped your dev and security and ops teams work better together. That's a that's a great DevSecOps story that I'd love to hear. But it's just this, it, uh, as I said previously, just the um, the kind of as, just having assess trial adopt as being the only data just makes like it just makes it a really weird list of things that appears to be fairly random. You know, it's just like you know, it's different things. These are not fulfilling one purpose at all there are lots of different pieces of infrastructure that um you know it's not it's not clear to me that devsecops i mean you know i kind of given up on devsecops being a being a movement or or about people anymore and but but even if you think it's about tools it's, it's a really weird set of tools um but i'd Harry. love to hear i'd love to hear people's stories about how these made their DevSecOps process better. And Adam making the point in chat that isn't that more of a problem with the definition of the category. And I, as I said at the beginning, I completely agree. I think that the choice of category is, or the scope of what these things are is unclear in this example. Harry, you were next, I think, and then Matt. Yeah, yes. Uh, so first of all, I just want to share the same feeling with Justin. Um, I think the first impression when I saw this um, radar I, I, as a user, I want, to I want to say it's more like some kind of recommendation. For example, if I want to um, adopt the uh, dev security ops practice, I will definitely look at the adopt section. I will say, oh, there is Argo CD, there's OPA, there's Terraform. But I think the issue here is there are many projects here or many products here that, that are actually have a very wide scope. For example, Terraform. It's not guaranteed that if I adopt Terraform, I can adopt the best practice of the dev security ops. And also this kind of issue, I think also applies to many projects like Istio, like um, there is GitHub Actions. It's still very hard for the user to gauge how can I practice uh, these dev security ops philosophies. Even I saw this picture. I, so that that is one thing that, that I'm thinking about. Maybe we need more five grand um, items in this project. For example, I think somebody mentioned that by reference by referencing GitHub Actions, maybe we are talking about GitHub Actions security module or something like that instead of the whole GitHub Action uh, thing. That is one feeling uh, when I first saw this um, the names in this um, radar. Yeah. Matt, you also had your hand. Uh, yeah, I mean, I concur with much of what's already been said, uh, but in addition, just, you know, if I didn't have context, right, if I had just heard about the CNCF, but I was into open source and I saw just this slide, what does it tell me, right? Does this mean that the TOC and or CNCF says I should only assess Linkerd. It's not really 
ready for me to adopt, even though Linker D is, you know, a graduated project and foundational, you know, for some, for, for many technology stacks, right? You know, MTLS everywhere, like that's a great building block, but does this mean that I shouldn't use it yet? Cause it's not ready. Like, you know, you could very easily get some, some very interesting <laughs> takeaways in terms of like, what does the TOC suggest I do to secure my cloud native systems? So I think in addition to everything else that's been said, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, I, I think it's an opportunity for folks to contribute in, in, you know, in terms of like optics and just overall messaging visually. Like, so every slide should be able to, you know, stand alone. And, and this one is, is highly ambiguous for me in, in, in a number of different ways. Uh, yeah, agreed. And, and I think the point you make about uh, the implication that the TOC thinks this and we don't at the at the moment have any yeah, yeah, yeah. involvement at all yes exactly um, and I'm uh, yeah, add a disclaimer that. this is not from the toc so <laughs> yes of course of course yeah. i just mean like i would just want to highlight it as an opportunity for folks for the background in you know <laughs> how to do this and what the nuances are this is a wonderful opportunity to 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 contribute and to broaden our tent and to to bring on New, new new voices to, to help with these this kind of of, uh, of an issue so yeah i don't mean to whine a rant i just i want to highlight it I, it's an opportunity that we have that makes sense alex you're next hi yeah um so apart from you know the ambiguity on this particular one because obviously devsecops is is a weird conglomeration of different technologies. Um, I think the challenge is how do we because this 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 some of the issues you mentioned around you know commercial companies versus open source and you know who's contributing to um, the list of products in the first place is is not something which is specific to just this radar, but it's also something that maybe happened in some of the other radars. You know, and and should this even be a CNCF technology radar as opposed to the CNCF end user group radar? And you know, what's the sample size and how many people are contributing as well? You know, so if if twenty organizations which are particularly vociferous in a particular area are contributing to to this list, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the generic list for everybody um in fact it might it might actually be a misrepresentative sample right so the, the way it's branded right now it makes it look as if the cncf is endorsing this and i and i think that's a fundamental problem because the cncf is not endorsing it and is not actually involved in generating the list other than facilitating the forum with the end users yes and Bob making the point that the site and and if you looked at the uh, the link that someone posted earlier with the methodology that quite consistently calls it the end user technology radar CNCF end user technology radar but then the uh, the image does not I'm not quite sure where I pulled that image from but it's very it implies that it is representing the view of the CNCF and I'm uh, right yeah. and and. <laughs> And the issue with that ambiguity is, of course, you know, then it gets misused in 101 other marketing blogs all over the place, right? Absolutely. It, you downloaded it from the link at the bottom on the radar page where it says download PNG or SVG. Yes, you're right, I did. And it's different from what's displayed on the page. Yes. Bob's also posted a, a, an older one, the secrets management one. And that I think is a really interesting contrast because it is much more, you know, concentrated on actual secrets management solutions. It does again include quite a lot of uh, commercial tools as well as open source. I don't know whether that is something that we should be concerned about. Whether we should, I, I certainly have a concern that if the CNCF is seen to be giving kind of a free free promotion to some vendors and not others that will 
so bad feeling and I know it does so bad feeling because some of that bad feeling has been expressed directly to me by some of the vendors <laughs> uh, Ricardo Aravani you have your hand up yeah so I, th I think uh, everybody talked about you know how this is very broad and I think uh, most of us agree that um, it may not be that useful for end users so I think the next I'm I'm thinking of the next steps. It would have in like a process uh, where the TOC and the tag um, engage with the end user uh, folks in the CNCF and the end user community to um, to improve this or or to 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 help out, right? So you know, having some 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 way of engaging or maybe having some way of saying. You know, before this is published, can it be reviewed by the TOC or by the tags? Yeah, and I think Erin suggested at the uh, right at the beginning of the call. Yes, Erin, should we have the tags vet these before they're published? Which is, I think, I guess that if we have it as the CNCF tech radar for sure. But if we want to just change it explicitly to this is what users are using. And this is their experience outside of the CNCF it's blessing. I don't know. I'm kind of, no matter what we publish, even if it says CNCF and user group, it's still going to be associated with the CNCF. So I think it's hard to detangle that relationship. Yeah, I agree. I wonder whether one of the good points we could try to get inserted or, you know, insert as a, technical group you know whether it's the TOC or the tags um right at the beginning where an end user group is picking a particular area to focus on maybe the the tag or the TOC could kind of just sanity check that the scope makes sense and maybe propose a list of projects that we think should be considered because I think somebody else made this point that the way it works as users fill out the survey or the spreadsheet, they can add new projects. So if you're the last person to fill in the, for, the sheet, you might add something that actually everybody else is using, but it wasn't on the sheet when they filled in the form. Um, and you could imagine that actually significantly affecting, given the small sample number, that could really affect the, uh, the outcome. So maybe having a hopefully pretty knowledgeable group pre-populating that spreadsheet with a set of projects that we think should be under consideration might help. Matt, you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, I think, um, so I participated in the end user uh, radars as an end user. Uh, hmm. And I think they are very valuable and, and your assessment that folks can just add things is correct. I think perhaps we need to do two things, really. And to reiterate what you had said earlier, Liz, which I, I fully agree with, you know, the Technical Oversight Committee can express some opinionated technical opinions, which it does through, you know, the whole frame of projects. But perhaps if there was, you know, this in its current form as, a, as an adoption uh, metric or an adoption radar, uh, you know, what are people actually doing? And, and if a project name is there, that might, you know, to me, that means that they're running the project directly themselves via leveraging a vendor. And it's, I think it's useful to understand what vendors are being used out in the community to, to you know, do, to have the, the market that we hope to build and we have built where open source projects fuel an ecosystem uh, of, you know, competitive friends Right, right, that are leveraging the same underlying technology. So perhaps the TOC, you know, should additionally produce a radar where the only thing on it are projects, right? So, you know, we could say, hey, for DevSecOps, which I agree is a tortured category, but for category name, you know, we, the TOC, think that these projects and highlighting graduated and particularly relevant incubation projects to me would be like where I would start so that technology leaders and architects that are crafting their own solutions using these technologies have some guidance, you know, at a high level about what the, the landscape of building blocks and, and Legos is, if you will. So 
Um, I, I think filling that vacuum versus trying to make the one radar all the things uh, might, 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 again, be an opportunity, you know, to, to, to expand the TOC's um, perception as, as more concretely useful to solutions, solutions builders. That's it. Yeah, I'd love to find a way that we can kind of get consent because I completely agree it's very useful to get an indication from end users about what they're actually using, but it would be really great if we could get consensus over what even falls into the same category. I think. We, we do have categories in the in the landscape. They're not perfect in any way, yeah. but they exist and they're maintained and they have a list of projects in with with reasons why a project's in there. So that would be one possible ask would be to say to the end users, perhaps you could concentrate your end, concentrate your themes on either an area from the landscape or possibly even a subset of an area from the landscape. Yeah, we, we could also empower them, right? Like we, we could actually just generate this. It wouldn't have to be subjective. It could be driven from the landscape, just a more zoomed in view at a particular sector that might be cross cutting or maybe if the categories don't fit but so these end user technology radars or, or adoption radars might be prefaced uh with you know from the toc like a, a format like a, a, a you know like for this sector here are the projects these are the graduated ones the innovation ones sandbox I, I don't know i think probably not but i don't know <laughs> but at least to, to preface the discussion and then here are you know the, the, the ecosystem of vendors which are thriving in an expanding market right uh that that are that, that are being adopted and, and then it's not subjective it's just it's data useful data i guess that does raise a, a a question of why and maybe just because nobody thought of it <laughs> um but why the end users didn't start from a selection of projects that were together in a, an area of the landscape. If I could just be so bold as to, I'll mute after this and go back to raising hand, but um, I, I think the reality for many end users is it's difficult to assemble the talent or the, the bench that has the capacity on top of their, you know, keeping the lights on to really go deep and, and do these assessments. That's why as an end user for me, probably the most useful artifact has been the uh, uh, due diligence reports for incubation and graduation, right? But, but you know, many of my colleagues, you know, it's just, it, it requires a base level of technical complexity and a deep enough technical bench to, to do those, you know, start from the projects, right? So it's a, a quick start here, which might, might really accelerate. Adoption. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, I think I did have another slide that had some broader ideas for things we could do. Oh, no, that unless, was right. It was just other considerations about. Unless one comment that I had about this is that, uh, you know, having a separate uh, waiter for open source project um, may not be necessarily the best because there's a lot of gaps in the, the open source projects and the the CNCF, I mean, there, I mean, and some of those B apps are, are covered by some vendors. So I think it might be useful to, to show that some of those things are maybe covered by vendors. And so, um, but yeah, just a comment. So. Yeah, I think someone, oh, it was you um, specifying which ones are open source and which ones aren't as part of the, the radar. I, that sounds pretty useful to me. Yeah. Maybe one thing we could do also, like taking your, your sentence there in the slide about getting the TOC community input into the end user radars. One, one thing that would be useful is also the other way to have more input from the end user radars into the TOC community, because all these interactions between the different projects and how they are used together would be actually very constructive uh, to, to, to better understand the landscape. And even yes. like gaps gaps in the projects that uh, that uh, in the CNCF. Yeah, and I actually think that's one of the potential things that we can learn from these radars is you know where we see there are non CNCF solutions. 
that's super useful input for sure. Um, so I think in practice, some of the things that I've heard people suggesting, and I think these make sense, were um, that at the start of this process with end users, um, maybe the, the TOC, I'm just going to say the TOC community, I, I don't know whether it devolves to tags or, or how we do that, but that we could kind of help preface that that end user discussion by saying, okay, if you want to look at, I don't know, I'm just going to pick storage. Here is what we currently have on the landscape for storage. This is the set of projects. This is how we currently see them from a sandbox incubation uh, graduation perspective. Maybe there are other projects you would also add to this set of projects. Um, but use that to kind of seed the, the set of projects under consideration. Um, the labeling of whether they're open source or not. And again, that could be done at, you know, in the spreadsheet, couldn't it? There's, there's you know, I think we're, we're at risk in some cases of ending up with the open source project and the commercial implementation of that project potentially even being in different parts in the radar and that would be kind of odd <laughs> um yeah and there's also the concern that you know a lot of companies have their open source project and then they enhance the open source project you know like open core right and they mm -hmm. enhance a project and to make it a some solution that it they can actually um, charge for. And then, do we want to specify that there on the radar or not? Or, um, but that, 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 that will go beyond like the scope of what open source is. Right? I mean, just at a more generic level though, you know, if the end users are voting what they're using, that may have some overlap with the CNCF in terms of projects that the CNCF is involved in, but actually the overlap might be minimal in many areas, right? I mean, it, it, I, I don't think it's necessarily a given that the radar is gonna be CNCF projects. I mean, it's gonna be, they're probably gonna be products from vendors or from projects which are in the broader landscape, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're CNCF projects. And, and in fact, that probably just anecdotally has had a guess that half or more easily are not CNCF projects, right? I mean, mm. so, so, you know, that's, that's where like the, the whole Kingmaker thing comes into play, right? Because effectively the CNCF ends up promoting things which aren't even CNCF projects. Right. Yeah. And I, and I suppose if I'm a if I'm a CNCF project and I see a competing non-CNCF project being promoted by the CNCF, I may feel somewhat aggrieved. Matt, you have your hand again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the kingmaker concern, one way potentially to ameliorate that, but also, you know, set what we do want is that the CNCFs really, you know, their deliverable, if you will, their value is, is, is fostering the ecosystem of vendors that are using these projects in all manner of creative ways. So as an end user, you know, what I really look to from the CNCF, you know, is to say, okay, for the vendors that might deliver value to my business with whatever level of UX and optics and, and usability, you know, is valuable to me based on my needs as a, as a, as an end user. Um, you know, I want to, part of my diligence, you know, as a decision maker is to ensure that the vendors that we're using, um, happily, right. Because it's hard to run some of this stuff or it's complicated, whatever, um, uh, that they're in alignment with the overall, like open standards and, and protocols and 
core technology building blocks so that, you know, fast forward a few years, I'm not, you know, having business critical things, you know, that are not, that are then reliant on something that's not in alignment with the overall architectural and technical roadmap of the CNCF umbrella and family, if you will. So, you know, for me, it's an opinionated thing from the TOC it doesn't mean like we're making, it's not a kingmaker thing, like thou shalt use this or we, we, we bless that, but it's, here's the building blocks that come from this open source communities that we're fostering. And then here's the vendors that are using these in overlapping and different and creative ways um, uh, that, that's, that's still in alignment with the overall trajectory of the cloud native ecosystem. Uh, and so I think it's nuanced, but the governance piece, you know, really is providing the framework. Like that's the output, that's the value of the TOC to, to, to let the whole thing exist, you know, with, with some guide rails. So I don't know if it's messaging or if it's just making it clear that, you know, the first set, of, maybe the preface that comes for all of these radars is like, here is the, here's the source material that these vendors pull from in the form of project. And then some of those projects can be used directly and are, uh, and others, you know, can be used by having somebody else run it for you or, or delivering sort of a batteries included approach. But, but understanding the relationship between those two kind of building blocks and concrete usable, you know, by a business today now, I, I think, you know, is more than the sum of e either of those two parts, right? It put together. Yeah, yeah, I like that was supercharged the radar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it would make it like a go-to, you know. And then that like feeds this virtual cycle that that expands the breadth, um, you know, of the CNCF in, in in a way that meets people's needs where they are. People being end users, and you know, that feeds more vendors and all of it. it, it but isn't that sort of like landscape in a way, uh, or maybe? Landscape has something that the radar doesn't, or the landscape is too broad, and the radar is just kind of like this, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, like kind of I almost, shot. Yeah. yeah, that first part is like a filtered subset of the landscape, right? You know, if you, <laughs> I actually made it, I actually put this in a in a talk just at KubeCon last week. You know, like like the, the the eye chart of the entire landscape. It's just it's like it's too much to grok at once, so it's not perhaps used as much. You know, I would advocate, you know, minimally as a starting point, just like make a filtered subset that's auto-generated that generates all of these radars. And then they're just available as a, as a template framework, you know, to the end user radar efforts, which I don't want to disparage, right? You know, they're, they're, they're wonderful. They're the best data point I've got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't want to... I don't want to end up with it looking like the TOC is trying to force the end user community into a certain opinion that they don't actually hold. I just feel that we, well, yeah, in, in this particular example, we probably would have suggested a different focus and we might have suggested some additional projects. And I'm sure we would have used the landscape as a as an initial point to see that. And I think maybe not even just the landscape because there might be, you know projects that the tags are aware of and it would be really in, i'm thinking for example of runtime where we know there's a ton of wasm projects kind of bubbling up and and knowing whether or not end users are looking at particular projects of, out of that set might be really interesting just as an example um but I, yeah i feel like we do need to seed seed some of this dims um so uh as an organization, we, you know, uh, you know, the end user community and TOC and other people, what we have in common is the landscape, which is structured information that we have. Uh, I think if the end user community doesn't see stuff that they are using there, then it should be added to the landscape and then uh, making it complete. And then like Matt was saying, there should be uh, like a filter on top of that which is what is called a radar right now, but it is an actually a survey, right? Like it is, no, it, is uh, the, it is a reflection of what people are doing right now or what 
uh, people are thinking, end users are thinking right now. And it's not like a recommendation going forward either, right? Like it's where they are right now in terms of like, yes, some people have adopted Istio, some people have not. And it reflects what they are using right now. So if we shift it around to say, hey, look, the, here are the end users. This is the landscape. Out of this landscape, here is the list of things that they're using. And these are the things that fall into different categories, right? So if we set it up that way and sh showcase it as the current CNCF end users, this is what we got from them. This is what they're using in the, uh, you know, uh, in their day-to-day work rather than you know what it is right now so if we can change it around uh, in in this case it, like whether it is uh, the tags or the end user all they will make sure is that the landscape is complete and then any um, you know voting um, you know stars whatever is on top of the landscape uh, and a subset of the landscape which can then be published periodically right so they would potentially be running the survey based on a section of the landscape. Right. Or, or yeah. they could pick like multiple sectors too. Like this year, we, we're going to do storage and we're going to do um, uh, observability, for example, right? Like, and have two radars published. Um, mm. and, and, almost and I think like it could be smaller than that, potentially. I thought secrets management was really interesting because it was a subset of what we... Right. Right. And it's almost like magic quadrant kind of scenario, right? Like, yeah. so. Uh. Yeah. If, so maybe this is a question for um, end users like Ricardo or Matt. Having been through the process of these end user radars, do you think it would work to start from the landscape and work from there. I, I can say something. I, I think it would work, but uh, we would lose this this additional feedback of like things that are not in the CNCF that end users are integrating into their deployments. Um, like this this would be maybe valuable input for for everyone actually. Um, what I what I think would be great would be to have more information than just adopt assess trial, but this is uh, maybe an um, like a demand for the end users that would probably reduce the number of replies if there's like too much effort to start writing these things. Mm. Right now, it's quite quite quick to go through this process. Maybe that's why also it's, the results are. You know, so maybe the answer is to start from the landscape or section of the landscape, have the ability for the end users to add these additional things that we're not currently listing for whatever reason. And then we can look at that and say, well, should we be, should we be adding those? Yeah, sorry, I had a Bluetooth kit uh, problem. Yeah, I think starting from a subset of the landscape, maybe not like, it, it, to me, it's less important that it follow the lines and the categories in the current landscape. Um, you know, but over time, I would think that we could use, if there's a big difference, you know, then perhaps we want to make more subcategories in the landscape. But, but, but certainly starting from just like, these are the set of projects, because it can be a lot, right? Like if you, if you have to come up with a platform and, and a roadmap, you know, and then put it into production and, and, and into practice, meaning your onboarding skills on your teams and whatnot, um, you know, it can be hard to keep track of all the things in all the sectors that you're responsible for. So I really think again, if if there were just a data driven, you know, these are the these are the these are the things in scope for this sector. You know, as as Liz and others had been talking about, um, that would provide that that context and a, and a mental model. And, and you could actually think of visualizations that kind of like show like you know, like a node graph, you know, with, with, with fan outs, you know, for what vendors are leveraging, which technologies, and we could even engage vendors and they, you know, just like they're proud to say, I'm a CNCF member and a vendor, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're proud to say, I contribute to this project or that project, right? Um, that's something in the, in the tag observability we, we have as a work stream that is, is no small feat. So if there was sort of some top-down 
guidance to meet the bottom up grassroots <laughs> efforts already underway to, to make those mappings a little more clear, then, you know, it could be, you know, here's the context, you know, and then here's the end, end user radar, which is again, easy to generate and, and low friction for the reasons that folks had said, you know, that, that can remain. It just, the first part of it shows that mental model so that when someone looks at that radar, they, they can kind of make the connections uh, that, that, that they need to make about what's important for them, right? Which technologies are, are more or less important to the bottom line of the business. Um, Thank you. Yeah, Alex, you have your hand. Yeah, so I actually think linking into the landscape might be a good idea, but I think the key thing in all of this is going to be about the quality of the data. And that's both in terms of, you know, which products get looked at, whether they're open source and commercial and whether they're on the CNCF landscape or not. And secondly, who's providing input um, to those surveys? Because it's, it's not just the number of end user companies, but it's also who in those end user companies were polling. You know, so, so if there's a nominated person, say, for some of these companies, which I suspect is how this runs, then some of these organizations are huge organizations with potentially tens of thousands of engineers. And it's, you know, it's unlikely that any single person is actually going to know exactly what's happening in all the, the whole organization anyway. But the, the key thing is, you know, if it's th these, um, these end user radars are valuable if, if somebody can look at them and actually make useful decisions based on this. And I think that's the value of polling the end users because we find out what the end users are actually using. But if, if on the one hand, you know, the data is maybe too specific or too focused because we're not polling the right people, or we're not including or excluding the right projects, then it either becomes too broad or too focused. And then people don't find it that useful. So, so this, is, this is part of the equation. The data is the most important thing and how we keep it up to date. Because if you're going to go through the, you know, if you're going to go through the phase where you're actually saying these things definitely use and these things only evaluate, then we should probably also specify some sort of review or at least get the end users to review after a period of time because you know some of those end user radars are now uh, a year or two old and you know we're kind of condemning certain organizations one way or the other yeah which, which, which is also a factor here should do you think we should actively be archiving these after let's say a year um potentially i mean it would be better if 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 you know if we were doing this under a cncf banner we should probably be reviewing them or at least say provide you know some sort of information as to why they're current or not current you know what i mean other otherwise otherwise it, it would uh, otherwise, data becomes expired and poor, and the poor data is, is the thing that I'm most keen on to to uh, to, to to make sure it's it's appropriate. Because, you know, thirty people from thirty individual companies, which might only be responsible for specific things in those companies, doesn't necessarily mean it's actually a valid set of data. It, it could be very focused, or we could be missing entire chunks, right? But you know, it's 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 hard to tell, and we're 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 then sticking the CNCF stamp on it to kind of indicate that it's it's supposed to be fair, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Yeah, and and Ricardo, all, 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 Ricardo although, also having a, a conversation that I think is relevant to this about how sometimes we have graduated projects that uh, maybe appear as assess, which is kind of weird and confusing. 
But as Ricardo points out, it's weird that that happens because we interview end users for incubation. So there must have been people using these things, but maybe those people who we spoke to, at, you know, for incubation or graduation reviews are not necessarily aware or involved in these radars and we're getting a very different picture. Well, you know, there's a cost to entry to being an end user in the CNCF, right? People have to pay for that subscription. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you're, you're, you're getting people who are, you know, committed to the ecosystem and wanting to help the CNCF, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's, you know, they're, they're end users that, um, that we would have interviewed in the incubation stage. Yeah. Okay, I think we've got a lot of very useful ideas here. I don't know how we resolve some of these. Like, how do we, what do we do when we have a graduated project that is not appearing, you know, when it's appearing in the assess phase? I don't know that we have a good answer to that, but I do think we have some suggestions here that we should take to the end user community and, and KT and ask for input at this earlier stage. I think the things that I'm taking away now is starting from the landscape as a first point of sort of listing what should go into the survey, agreeing the scope of that survey. Um, crossed my mind that this is an opportunity for the end user and TOC communities to work together, which we don't have enough of those. So I, I, I hope that's seen as valuable from the end user's point of view as well. I think we should raise the possibility of archiving them after some period of time, because yeah, if they're two years later and we're still saying this graduated product, project is, is in assess, that's gonna be very misleading. And we should try and look for ways of keeping these more up to date. I think we need to be more prominent about the fact that these come from a set of end users and maybe indicating the number of respondents, like including that in the graphic so that when it's downloaded, it's more clearly labeled as a, a hopefully representative, but nonetheless, it's a snapshot of a survey of a certain number of end users at a particular point in time. Yeah, Did I uh, yeah the last point? one I had was um, don't uh, you know position this as you should do this. It's more of like this is what we have found. Um, so changing the way to look at the data to reflect that it is a consensus of end users up to this point, and it's not like something uh, looking forward, right? It's looking backwards. That's a great point. The, the, those words, assess, trial, and adopt, sound imperative, don't they? Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. I think there was another point about connecting the dots between the, you know, the vendors and the open source projects. Yes. I, yeah. I, I see. Yeah, I see that as, as actually providing a little bit more information in the radar, because when you take a snapshot or you, you, when you see the, the visual, you know, there's a lot of questions, right? So maybe try to think about how to address those questions in that first visual, right? When you, when you see that right? um, and, and connect the dots, it's yeah, so something to keep in mind. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a very good, good point to add. All right, uh, with five minutes to go, anyone have any other points they want to make about this general topic? I'll just make one small point. I, I kind of, you know, I kind of probably might have come across as slightly negative here. I actually think the end user radars are really valuable and useful and there's probably more right in them than than you know wrong and so this is this is one of those things where um 
you know the, the last 20 percent is probably 80 percent of the work and we should <laughs> we should think about how we how we factor that in um but 80 percent of it is actually pretty pretty good and very very useful and there's you know been a lot of positive feedback for it too um so yeah i, I didn't want to, you know i don't think we should throw the baby out of the bathroom so to speak and then the other one that I also thought about was uh, Ricardo's uh, point of how we use these things together. It's almost like this is our stack. Like, so if you, if we, if we let the end users say, de design their own stacks, like I use these set of technologies together and then basically vote on them saying, hey, this is the most popular one. Uh, you know, that might be another way to look at it. Um, this is the whole reference architectures right, idea, exactly. isn't it? Right. Yeah. So I use Argo CD and I use Vault and then I use um, uh, Litmus with whatever, right? Like this is my stack that I use uh, in my company, right? Like, so uh, that would bring out these additional, um, you know, tidbits instead of like, if we just have a radar for storage, it really doesn't make any sense. But if we work on like, here is the stack, here is a different set of uh, different variations of as stacks, that might, there might be something there too. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea of this. And in fact, it did come up as a suggestion in the, the governing board that could we be doing more in, in terms of reference architectures? And I think this has come up in the TOC before and I, I think everybody, you, you know, everybody is in favor, just a question of finding the time um, with the caveat that we, we shouldn't have one reference architecture. We should try and have several, and ideally they come from end users and it's, you know, this is what end user A is doing. This is what end user B is doing. This is end user C. Again, it can be a snapshot in time, but if we could get those, you know, uh, kind of case studies, I suppose, in the form of re reference architectures, that would be amazing. Yeah. Some plus ones. Uh, Bob's saying, I like the idea of a user story in a stack, letting them describe why and where they're, why and what they're using. Yes, hearing decision on logic on why they chose a specific thing would be useful. Completely agree. Really good. All right, I think this is super useful. Um, I'm sure because people like Ricardo are representing end users on the TOC, but um, we'll also, I think, in the TOC, just write up some notes to kind of propose to the end users in a you know formal sort of a way, so that we've got something written down. But I think we can uh, we can take this to the next level of usefulness together. Brilliant. Thanks everyone for all your ideas and input. This was super. All right. Perfect. Thank you. We're done. Yeah. We didn't have anything else, did we? Nope, that was it. All right. Brilliant. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.